Hello everyone, and welcome to the Good Game Lobby Review. Thank you for watching, and if you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe to see more indie reviews like this. You can find the written reviews on our Substack and watch clips of the games we play on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, and Twitter. All on the handle at Good Game Lobby. Now moving on, today we're heading to Montreal to add color to the world in Ete. Imagine a summer in Montreal where the city's vibrant streets and scenic neighborhoods come to life with every stroke of your paintbrush. You are a watercolor painter who has just arrived in the city looking for a new creative outlet. This is the premise of Ate, the debut title from Impossible, an indie studio based in Montreal. One of the first decisions you make is to pick a color in the game, and I chose cyan as my favorite. This decision brings color to certain items you see throughout your exploration of the city. The game's core mechanic, using watercolor to paint the world in 3D, is both innovative and visually stunning. As you color various Montreal neighborhoods, you reveal the hidden beauty of the city, making each exploration a new and delightful experience. Coloring in each item flashes with a highlight that brings it to life. Bubbles of watercolor orbs jump out from each everyday item and float above until you move closer to collect them. The sound they make is a full-on dopamine rush for me every time. That popping bubble sound is truly euphoric. I found that I would get a bit lost in just wanting to add color to the world. In one instance, I accidentally discovered that the sky itself was a canvas. Now I was filling the world with a bright blue sky that was not only exciting to paint, but also a rush of happiness to give this world its full potential. It was the end of the day for me in the game, so I immediately went to sleep so I could wake up and paint more of the sky. One of the standout features of Ate is its emphasis on creative freedom. Players can create unique artworks by assembling stamp compositions on canvas, allowing for limitless artistic expression. This feature, paired with the ability to collect stamps for your sketchbook during your explorations, encourages players to continually seek out new subjects to paint, enriching their in-game experience. It even gives you an opportunity to kind of be goofy and make some really silly paintings like you see here. As you create these pieces of work, you sometimes have the option to not only rotate the stamps, adjust the size, or recolor them, but also to animate them as you see here. This gives more life to the paintings when creating new pieces. The game also offers a relaxing and pressure-free environment. There are no failures, making it perfect for unwinding and enjoying at your own pace. This calming aspect is complemented by the game's other activities, such as decorating your art studio. Players can purchase and arrange furniture and trinkets to create their ideal creative space, further personalizing their journey. Similar to games like Animal Crossing, you can interact with the antique shop owner to refresh the items in the shop so you can complete a collection of furniture or decorations. In addition to its artistic features, the game fosters a sense of community through its commission system. Players befriend locals and take on inspiring artwork requests. These commissions are designed as puzzles, adding a layer of thoughtful engagement without overwhelming you. This mechanic not only drives a narrative forward, but it also deepens your connection to the world and its residents. For instance, you meet a woman who sells different items in the main neighborhood and decorates her storefront with bird cages. She has an obsession with birds and asks you to watercolor a piece for her. And upon delivering this new piece, you are rewarded with the stamps I mentioned earlier of a bird cage and feather. Ete's exploration aspect is another highlight. As you progress, more neighborhoods become accessible, each offering new sites and artistic opportunities. You'll come to find bike racks in each area. They give you the ability to fast travel between these neighborhoods, making it easy to complete the artwork requests. The game beautifully captures the essence of Montreal, with its diverse architecture and vibrant culture, making the city feel alive and inviting. The city can sometimes look very bland, and as you fill in the color, you'll turn around to look back at the area that you just colored in to see that more people are there engaging and speaking with each other. This brings the city to life. The audio and soundtrack are one of my favorite parts of this game. The audio cues you hear from watercoloring, absorbing watercolor, and discovering new pigments around Montreal are done with great detail by Eric Shaw and the team at Pixel Audio. 
These audio cues are accentuated by the enthralling soundtrack that has a very French style. While exploring and coloring in, you have to pay close attention to the audio in the game, or you might miss out on the hidden items in the city. These sometimes easy to find items are pigments that you collect. You hear the equivalent of a kind of glittering sound. And once you have up to three of these pigments, you can go back to your apartment and can combine them to unlock more colors to use in your palettes. In my early 20s, I would frequent Montreal and personally loved the look and feel of that city. It was like a tiny little European town in North America where an occasional shop owner would delight this American socially outgoing banter. Aside from me not finding any poutine in the game, I felt like I was back in the city in my 20s exploring the streets of Montreal again. Impossible's Ete is a delight of interactive art and exploration. It invites players to immerse themselves in a world where creativity knows no bounds and relaxation is a staple. Whether you are an artist at heart or simply looking for a calming game experience, Ete offers a unique blend of painting, exploration, and personal expression that is both captivating and refreshing. I typically don't like farming in games, and I can see how coloring every item you see might feel similar. But as I mentioned, it is truly euphoric feeling to bring color to this world. So now that you've learned a bit about the game, what do you think? Will you check out this indie title? And be honest, what did you think of my paintings? Thanks for watching this review, and make sure to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel for more indie gaming reviews like this. And as always, GG. I want to thank Pop Agenda and Impossible for the key to review this game.